I wanted to put this book out in the universe for other people to read, to, to show them that there are good people doing kind things for others all over the place. It's what, it, what, it's what unites us. You know, I really think that kindness begets kindness and those that do good things for others, it gets passed along, right? One of the things that I really loved about the book is when I, when I do my show every day, I try to do it with a little bit of a smile on my face. I try to do it so that people don't feel depressed after about the news. I'm not trying to just bludgeon everybody so that they're stuck watching, which is pretty much what CNN and a lot of the other places are doing. So I guess first, how did you kind of come to that place where telling people some of the good stuff uh, actually mattered to you? I've been telling good news stories for many years now. I do a feature on Fox News Radio called The Dean's List. Yeah. Um, and it's a 60 second feel good story about a person doing kind things for someone else or you know, doing something that brings sunshine into someone's day. So I've been doing that for a very long time. And I always thought to myself, I would love to make this into a book where I could dive into these stories, each make them a chapter. So this was that this was that book. I started working on it before the pandemic, uh, but I wrote most of it and did a lot of the interviews during the pandemic. Um, and more than ever, even though we were socially distancing from each other, I was finding these stories all over the place of people doing wonderful things for other people. We were adapting as human beings. Um, you know, you saw people doing car parades for birthdays. I got one of those. My husband did that for me for my 50th birthday. Um, so, and the other part of this was, you know, I wanted to put this book out in the universe for other people to read, to, to show them that there are good people doing kind things for others all over the place. It's what, it, what, it's what unites us. You know, I really think that kindness begets kindness and those that do good things for others, it gets passed along. Right. So, but what I didn't realize, Dave, is that I was the one that was going to get the most out of writing this book because I was talking to these wonderful people during the darkest time for our family and, and getting light and goodness from all of these stories and interviews that I was doing. And every day, you know, I would I'd take my oldest son, Matthew, for a walk. And that would be our topic of conversation. He'd be like, Mom, who'd you talk to today? Tell me the story. And I would tell him the story of the napkin notes dad who wrote napkin notes for his daughter, Emma, when she was just a little girl and how he continued doing that, even though he was diagnosed with cancer and thought he might not live to see her graduate. So he wanted to make sure he wrote napkin notes for hundreds of school days in case they lost him. He's still here. And I talked to him and I talked to Emma. And so those are the people that brightened my day when we were going through such dark times. Uh, so that's the ironic part of this is I got so much out of writing this book more that more so than I ever thought I would. Yeah. So I want to dive into a couple of the stories because there's some really great stuff in there. But I'm curious, when you were pitching the book and, and bringing it to your publishers and everything, is is selling a book that's that's so positive, is that tough for those guys? Because if you just look at a bookstore, you know, front front area, what's in the window, I mean, it's all basically depressing stuff. You know, the world's coming to end, the pandemic's gonna kill you, Trump tried to kill you, somebody else is coming to get you, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's a tough sell, I'm not gonna lie. And what I didn't tell you is, uh, before the Dean's List happened, I did a good news story on Fox News, a show called Happening Now with my friend mm -hmm. Jane Skinner. Um, and she was the one that came up with the Dean's List because she thought, you know, the news is so terrible. We need something bright and cheery. And you do the weather. And, and you know, the weather is, is a lot of times it's mostly sunny, but sometimes there's, it's stormy. But why don't we work on a good news story that we can use as a kicker? We call it a kicker in the business. And so we started doing that on television but the, the news kind of like took over and the Dean's List got killed more often than not. But I was, you know, she was always a cheerleader of it. So the moral of the story is, you know what, sometimes the good news doesn't sell. Um, but I think now more than ever, we need these stories, Dave. You know, I really think that we need to hear these hopeful, good stories about trying to be a better human being. Um, and so that's my message. And I will tell you, <laughs> that I got a lot of people saying to me, okay, your book is coming out. When are you going to stop with the Cuomo stuff? Because we need the bright <laughs> right, right. to come out and be like, 
hi, I'm the sunny girl who brought you this, the most make your own sunshine stories. And I said, you know what? I'm both. Why can't I be both? Because I am both. I am still the half, the glasses half full. I'm still the mostly sunny girl. I'm also an advocate who wants to shine sunlight as a disinfectant. So, you know, I think the advocacy can also be making your own sunshine. Um, so, you know, trying to balance th both of those things is I can be both at the same time, but I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes the good news stories are a tough sell. Excellent use of the metaphor with sunshine as the best disinfectant that fully works with the book. <laughs> um, give, me, give me like two stories that, you, that really particularly moved you. I, I can pick one or two, but, but if you got some that are right off the top of your head. Well, it's funny because everyone tells me a different story that they love. And that's what I love about it is that, you know, someone will say, well, I loved, you know, the, the Carrie Blasey story. So I'll tell you that one. That was the, the first one, the first, um, one of the first interviews that I did during the pandemic and Carrie and I became very close friends afterwards. Simple story. Her daughter, uh, was diagnosed with type one diabetes, forgive me, type two diabetes. What's the more serious one? I forgive me. Um, I don't want to screw this up. So I'm going to get my book right. You're, this is, this is impressive. An author actually going to the source. I like it. Well, wait, I've got thing. it. Let's see who can find it first. I don't want to screw it up because there's, there's a really, okay. There's a really, there's two types of diabetes. Yeah. And the one that she has is the really serious one, type one. Type one. Okay. And that's why it's important because Carrie is a big advocate for type one diabetes because that's, you know, not to say that type two is, is not a serious illness as well, um, but the, type one is when you're really, really constantly concerned about your child. Every day they take her, you know, her measurements, her glucose levels. She's got a, a special, you know, uh, a, a special portal on her mm -hmm. body that has to be, you know, her insulin has to be um, just right, the right level. So having said that, um, Carrie put a sign on her door saying uh, that she had uh, a person who was compromised living in her house. And as a person who lives with MS, I can totally identify with that. At the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't know how bad it was. She didn't want the virus anywhere near her daughter, her compromised daughter. So she put a sign on the door that said, if you have any deliveries, leave the package here. Don't ring my doorbell. I'm not opening up the door. Just leave it here and I will sanitize the package and bring it in. So a wonderful FedEx driver sees the sign and, and, and says, oh, goes back to his FedEx truck. They see this, by the way, on a camera. He doesn't know that he's being filmed. They mm -hmm. have one of those Nest cameras on their, on their doorstep. He goes back to the FedEx truck, grabs uh, some wipes, and wipes the package. He smudges the print on the package and, and thinks to himself, oh, I, I don't want them to wonder why the the package is smudged. So he writes a note saying, I saw your note on the door. I sanitized the package. Have a great day. He didn't expect anything from that. She saw the video of this kind FedEx driver and thought to herself, wow, he went the extra mile, took the extra step to do this for my family. And her husband was the one who said, you should put that out on social media. Maybe he'll get a raise or FedEx will do something nice for this driver. And she put it on social media. It went viral. FedEx certainly, you know, saw that. Uh, Justin Bradshaw, by the way, is the FedEx mm -hmm. driver. And as it turns out, Justin has uh, a little girl that when she was born was a preemie and they had to take care of her and they were worried about her. So his backstory sort of reflects upon, you know, why he was doing what he was doing. So that's the story of Carrie Blasey and her daughter, Emma, and the wonderful FedEx dr driver, Justin, who did a kind thing that deserves all of our attention. And that's why I started the book with that chapter. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.